Greetings, everyone. This is Tasno Balam Ahuna from Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies. Welcome to our second episode of Strategic Talk. Here we talk about, talk to the experts to understand how they see certain issues and what's their point of view. So let's go to, uh, let's get to today's episode. We have Ms. Aisha Kabir with us. She's the head of Prathamalo's English section. Today, she's here to talk about the women empowerment in South Asia. How are you, ma'am? Welcome to Strategic Talk. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I'm thank you, ma'am. So, uh, as our topic is the women empowerment in South Asia, where do you think we currently are with this issue? What is your assessment of the current status of women empowerment in South Asia? Women empowerment in South Asia. Uh, I'm afraid that despite having a lot of good examples, a lot of bright examples and instances, we are not really in a very good place. If we want to be realistic and being very frank, we are not in a good place at all. We have some really powerful women, our own in Bangladesh, our own prime minister is a woman, a very powerful prime minister. We have ministers, we have women in many um, higher meaningful places, not just Bangladesh, in South Asia and all the countries in Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, all the countries, we have powerful women, but the percentage is so small and the impact, I think it's not even um, a fraction of what it should be. Because when we look at women as the whole in South Asia, we're making up more than around 50% of the population, plus or minus, depending on the country. And if you see the status of most of the women is dismal. Dismal is not an exaggeration, it's worse than dismal. Whether it's in the urban settings or in the rural settings, women don't have a voice. They are not in decision making, they're not in policy making. And um, they're still facing violence, there's violence against women, they're facing discrimination. It, at every step, whether you're educated, whether you're uneducated. So I don't think it's a very pretty picture for women in South Asia. Ma'am, yes, the situation may not be at its best, and especially in South Asia. And as most of South Asia is still in a developing status, how do you think empowering our women can be important in developing the region? And why it is, why the women empowerment for this region's development is so important? Well, there's certain key elements which are essential to ensure women are empowered, women have their rights, women have a voice. Two very essential elements are education and economic emancipation. Um, without education, without uh, economic independence, a woman does, doesn't have a voice. So I think uh, these are the areas which have to be given emphasis on, but to do that, the number one tool is political commitment, political will, unless the governments of these countries of South Asia, the various governments actually want women empowerment, it'll never happen. Uh, not only the governments, the, the other institutions. And so the concentration must be on educating women and educating them in a meaningful manner. And also um, when I say empowerment, not just giving them jobs or entrepreneurs, but giving them positions where they make a difference, where they can have their input into policy, into decision making. And they can only do that when they're earning, when they're earning members of their families, of their communities, then they have a say. And another thing is sensitization. Whether you're a man or a woman, there has to be gender sensitization. And this is both for men and women from an early age, from the family, from when the moment a child is born or even conceived, it shouldn't be seen that, oh, she's a girl and she'll get less priority or he's a boy, he'll get more priority. And that's why there's such a despicable situ um, status of women where, you know, they're given so much um, lesser priority than men from their birth from before birth in every sector. So this mindset has to be changed. So this calls for education, for sensitization, 
in schools and families and communities at every level. So ma'am, uh, to improve or develop this specific region, it's clear that we cannot grow or develop if we leave our women behind. But how are we going to do that? You, uh, you mentioned about the government policies and uh, the national policies as well. So what are the key ways of empowering women in general, specifically if we talk about South, South, South Asian region? So in South Asian region, basically what is needed is a mindset change. So there needs to be public awareness mobilization. So other than basic, as I was saying, education and economic empowerment to get these things, those are there, those are obviously what are needed, but why will a person educate their girl instead of the boy, which they're used to doing? Why will they give them priority? Why will they give them jobs? Why will they encourage them to enterprise? So the, why will they do that? Because they will have to be made to understand that a woman and a man, and there's just simply no difference. So there's a need for sensitization, a mindset change. And this is very important because without the development of women, no development can be sustainable. We can say that, okay, Bangladesh is making strides in development. India is making strides in development. But it's nothing unless a woman is also empowered, is also developed. This development will not be sustainable, will not be meaningful. We'll continue with discrimination. We just slip back to the Middle Ages. We might have a glossy exterior, but inside us, we just will be back in the Middle Ages. Exactly, ma'am. And that is what that leads, leads to the next question I was going to ask. That uh, uh, if we assume that the countries in South Asia dis will decide to adopt these options, and what backlashes do you think uh, will be faced by them? I mean, what are the main challenges of women empowerment in South Asia, as we have seen that the newly formed Taliban government did not include women in their cabinet, and now their approach to women empowerment seems to be positive. So what is your take on the current status of women in Afghanistan after this Taliban takeover? Or how is it going to affect the South Asian region at all? When we talk about Afghanistan and the position of women there, it's beyond words, despicable is the word, because there was a lot of talk about rhetoric about their change, the Taliban has changed, their attitude has changed, not at all. I have friends there who are journalists. They didn't even want to leave the country. Many, many of them have been forced to leave. They've gone to Canada. Many of them are still there. They can't go to work. They can't practice uh, their professions. Girls are being allowed to go to school. I mean, just the fact that they're saying that they're being allowed to go to school, that itself is bad. They're having to wear not just the normal hijab which we see they're having to go just back to like it was in before primitive times medieval times so the pakistan and the afghanistan example is sad very sad and the worst thing is that it might have an impact on the rest of the region because we've seen how um this Islamization, and I'm not meaning in a positive sense, I'm meaning in the extremist sense, that then that does affect every other country. And we in Bangladesh know that more than anyone else, how it can affect and have a, a very um, regressive effect on women's development. So we have to keep an eye on Afghanistan and we have to make our own people, I'm not meaning just Bangladesh, that's Pakistan, which is right next to Afghanistan, where women have made so much achievements, whether it's Nepal, Sri Lanka, India, where women are making so much achievements. We must not let Afghanistan situation affect us, not let it come through. At the same time, we must stand for our sisters in Afghanistan. I think if we are a South Asian entity, we shouldn't just be complacent that, okay, we are fine. We should stand up for our Afghanistan sisters too, in any way we can. Uh, Ma'am, in continuation to that, uh, do you really think that Bangladesh will be affected a lot from, our, uh, from the women empowerment point of view? Because we have been doing uh, not particularly bad in this sector. So 
do you really think that uh, this Afghanistan situation can harm us, the women empowerment situation in Bangladesh? Actually, I think it can. We've been doing very well. We've been doing very well. But as I said, there's no room for complacence because we're taking uh, one step forward, two step backwards. Why? Especially in this COVID situation, we were doing so well when it came to child marriage, eliminating child marriage. Look at it now. We've gone much worse than before. We've just slipped back. The little girls, they're not going to school because of this coronavirus. The children parents don't want to keep them at home. And so they're just getting them married off. So that is just one example. And religion, they can use religion as a tool for this because, I mean, misuse religion, not use religion, abuse religion as a tool for this. And when, uh, if you're talking about the Afghanistan influence, I don't think it will have like a sudden immediate impact that everyone will start wanting to go to Afghanistan to fight or being influenced. But it can have a gradual impact, which we should really, really not let our guard down, thinking, okay, we are very progressive, we are very, Bangladesh isn't like that. Our prime minister is a, a woman, we've got women journalists, we've, and we've got women, you know, in the corporate world. But we can't be complacent. We've got a lot of women who are also being influenced by extremist ideology. And as we know that more and more women are being recruited by extremists because they're very effective tools. <clears throat> they can influence their families, their communities. So we shouldn't let our guard down. The extremists, ha extremists haven't let their guard down and we shouldn't let our guard down either. Yes, ma'am. This is a matter of serious concern, to be very honest. And so this is a rather vast topic to be discussed in a small, such a small time frame. So I wish we had more time to discuss this issue with you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for lending us some time on this discussion, to be in this discussion. So that was all for the second episode of Strategic Talk. We had Ms. Asha Kabir with us. We had such a wonderful discussion today. I hope you all will enjoy Thank you so much, everyone, for being with us. See you all in our next episodes.